the channel of mine. Please to bring you this game live on our Swansea Cable Access Facebook page. And joining me once again is Brady Kudo. Thanks, Tyler. Welcome, everybody. Bourne High School, what they're going to do, they got two seniors leaving us tonight on senior night here at Case High School. They play that run and gun type offense, love to push the ball up the court, and they love the fast break. Case, Amber Aruda is leaving us tonight, her farewell game, and she told me pregame. She's happy to leave, right? Not happy to leave, but excited to see what she does in the future. Very thankful to Coach Silva, all the family, and friends that have supported her. And she said that Case High School has really made her who she is today. So, big night for Amber, we've been calling her name on the Monday Game Black for several years. Senior night, the only senior on the team. And we are underway at the opening. Kids are definitely going to be controlled by Bourne after all that. Play the watch, number 14, he pulled it out to free game. Uh, yes, Kaya Fernandes. Kaya Fernandes. Yep. He's going to have the ball here at the top of the key. He's going with a zone defense right now with their typical starting five out there. He's a shot three-pointer for Bourne. Yeah, off the back of the rim and no go. And it's rebounded by Jamie Owen, number 10 for the final. So he's going to have the Corey Bettenford. Back to Riley Fitzgerald. He's going to heave up a three. Bam! Riley Fitzgerald for three! Fitzgerald! Gonna get it. That was quick. That was quick, right? Oh, right away, first shot of the game. Already hit the half court trap. He's going with that half court trap, as you said. Warren breaks through the trap. Warren, interesting, they get two CDs in the starting lineup. Yes. They also have two sophomores in. Freshman out there as well, so they have a bit of a youth like Case. And a jump ball there. Jump ball, possession, Cardinals. And arrow's gonna go to Case. I gotta yeah. train my neck a little yeah. more. Slightly more lightly. Yeah. Tip of the wire in the broadcast. And another two balls. Oh, Not to mention there's right behind where the, the scores table is. There's these black bars I can easily see through it. With maroon and gold to celebrate senior night. What? No. No, I don't think we do. Yeah. Yeah. And back to it. Back court, actually. No foul call. Yeah, McCarthy's their sharp shooter for sure. Let her go, hey. Yeah, there's a foul on McCarthy, speak of the devil. Team's first. She gets it to Fernandes. Keep going back with that zone defense. Yes. We love to use the 2-3 zone. They use it really well. Storching defense from them. Barmashi shot off the back of the rim. No good. Pulled down by Bourne. The shot is up foul. And to the line, it's going to be number 11, just the slam. Who had the other three for Bourne? I missed it when we were getting. All right. Let's play it in a second. That was. 
when we were yeah. being told to move this way compared to the media people up here. I, I missed it. I'll have to check with the, the scores table at halftime to see who got that bonus shot. No good. Pulled down by the canalman. That's Gobiel, number 10, Grace Gobiel. Long pass up, run and gun indeed, and the shot is up. Good defense and a foul there. That was going to be on number 32, Brooke Orton. That's already her second. Yeah, she's going to be careful. Free throw was good from Barmashi. And Abby Saroy is going to come in, as I predicted, and Orton's going to come out. Second free throw is good as well for Barmashi. It's 9 to 5 right now in favor of Bourne. Tori Bentoncourt going to break through that trap. Almost a foul called to Fitzgerald into Arruda. Fitzgerald, she's going to shoot that three. No good. Rebound is tipped around, controlled by Abby Soroyce. Under the rim, and she missed it under the rim. Rebound now controlled by Bourne. Tipped that bounce off of Moniz. So Bourne will get that in now. And just so to Fernandes. Case going back to that trap. Tipped pass and good stolen by Soroyce. Soroyce can get back to Moniz. Moniz to Bentoncourt. Now looking inside back to Moniz to Amber Arruda there. And that's going to be, no, not a jump ball. It's actually going to be controlled by Bourne and then stolen by Case. It's Gerald. Oh, nice take by Fitzgerald. Take the easy points when you can get them. Riley right. does a great job of that. Nine to seven right now, 4.15 remaining. Case going back with that trap. Pass up to Barmashi and a foul there. Mass exodus of subs coming in. Number 24, Brooke McCallum is in. Uh, Hannah Wenzel, number 32, is in. And looks like number one, Emma Borgold, is in as well for Bourne. Case going with the same five that were just in there. Fernandes with the ball now. Quickly double teamed in the corner there. That was McCarthy. Quick pass going on. This is Borgold. And a travel there. Tori Mentcourt going to get it in to Aruda. Back to Moniz. Moniz to Fitzgerald. This is Soroyce. And a travel there calling Abby Soroyce. Hey, McCarthy will get it in. She does so to Fernandes. 3.45 remaining here in the first quarter. Bourne brings it over. Back up to Fernandes. A lot of quick passing are going for the canal, but between McCarthy and Fernandes, that's over to Borkel. This is going to be McCallum. Back up to Fernandes. Thought about it. And the drive puts up the shot. A little too hard off the glass. And the rebound is in a travel there called on Case. I didn't see that. and kind of fell down with it. McCarthy gets it looking for McCallum, and that almost went out of bounds, but she did pick it up. Borgald up to Fernandes, going back to that zone defense there is I'm curious Kate. to see what this X play is that they're trying to draw up. Callum Fernandes, here's the three-pointer. It's up. It's no good. A little too short. Rebounded by Aruda. Kind of plucks that right out of the air. Soroyce to Riley Fitzgerald at that three-pointer early. Five points total. Soroy's going to drive with it, looking for Aruda. She puts up a jumper, and it goes. Amber Aruda ties it at nine right now. High pass up to McCarthy underneath, and... It's like Abby Soroy's going to get some arm on that one. First on Soroy, the team's fifth already. And free throws in and out. Several subs coming in. Jessica LaFlam back in. Uh, Barmashi back in. I was told by Coach Dave Silva pregame that 
that Bourne uses their bench a lot, just like how Fairhaven does. Just so silent when the free throw is being shot. Yes, Dave Silva did say that. They like to empty that bench. And they've certainly seen plenty of that in this game. Case has only used one substitute so far, and that's because of foul trouble. Ruta, Fitzgerald, she's going to launch the three. Got it! We can't leave her over for three. Riley Fitzgerald for three. Well, going to give Case the lead currently by three points. 2.20 to go here in the first quarter. Farmashi. Back to Fernandes at the top of the key zone defense once again for Case. Fernandes is going to launch that three and in and out. Does not quite get the roll and a foul. That's on Emma Her first, team second. That was going to be an Emma Borgault. Her Number first, 10, team second. Grace 10 Gray Scobiel back in. Set in court, she gives it up to Moniz, to Aruda, and it's stolen right out of the air there by Barmashi for the Canalman. To the lane she goes, left-handed layup, it is no good. Ball on the ground, still on the ground. It's finally controlled by Sirois. Going the other way, and that, I'm not sure where that pass was to, but it went right into the hands of Barmashi for Bourne. Quick pass all the way up to Laflam, and it goes. Jessica Laflam makes it. 12 to 11 right now in favor of Case. Great defense there from McCarthy. Ball on the ground, controlled by Case finally. Bentoncourt lost the handle, picked up by LaFlam. She gets it back to Fernandes. High pass right over the head of Barmashi. Turnover there for the Canalman, so Case will get it in on the far side. And Moniz does get it into Bentoncourt. Benton court to Soroy. Oh, what's the foul there? Soroy's to Moniz to Aruda. Thought about the shot, did not take it. Now she gives it up to Benton court to Fitzgerald. Back to Benton court, looking for Aruda. Gets it to her. Thought about it. Very good defense there from the Canalman. Yeah, Bourne's done their homework on Amber. Not giving her anything. Moniz with the quick shot and goes. Moniz has her first two points. First two points, yeah, you're right for Jamie Moniz. It's 14 to 11 right now in favor of Case. And that was a good transition pass, but the shot is off and a jump ball called. Jump ball, possession Cardinals. Possession error goes to Case this time around. Forty, uh, 41 seconds to go here in this Born first quarter. using the full court track. Benton court and it's stolen by Fernandes. She's an excellent player and she is quick and a travel there. Picked up her pivot foot. Good call. Good defense there by Moniz to, to force yeah, that travel yeah. too. So 29.5 seconds. Shot clock is off. Case can hold for the final shot. I don't think they're going to do that. I would, but you really don't need to. And as soon as I say that, Sirois puts up the shot and out of bounds off of Bourne. Coach Davidson, Craig Davidson of the Canal, and telling his players to come out of the shot, step out on a three-point shot. And we call it jump ball, procession, born. Yeah, that was kind of strange, Amber. Yeah. Him, but that was the right call, it was a jump ball. Yes, yes. So Bourne now, they want to hold for the final shot they can. They have 16 seconds and down by three. If they're smart, they will hold. Fernandes underneath the pass. Good D by Jamie. Going to be McCarthy back to Fernandes. They have five seconds. McCarthy going to shoot it and in it goes. Three pointer. That'll do it here for the first quarter. Game is going to be tied at 14 after one quarter. So I don't know, Bray. That was a pretty good first quarter that we saw. Yeah, I'd say both teams really emphasizing defense in that first quarter. One thing Case got to do better, they got to live with a three-point shot, right? Haley McCarthy checking in at the end of the first quarter with nine points. All of those from three-point range. Got to step out on those shooters. Board, what are they going to do better? They're going to take care of the basketball, stop the jump ball, and 
I don't know. I think we're going to be in for another closely contested second quarter. All right, so both teams coming in pretty even. Case is a 10 and 7 record, and Bourne comes in with a, a 9 and 5 record. I will say it's worth pointing out too that the Case girls team has already qualified. They've already yes. qualified for the postseason. They beat uh, Wareham by double digits a few days ago, which gave him the qualification needed for the MIAA Division III State Tournament. So and congratulations to Case. The first time in. Um, they missed it last year by a game. One, point, one game, right. The first time in several years, I don't remember, probably been about 10 years, the last time that the uh, Case girls team was in the state tournament. So we'll see how they can go. I mean, they, they can still obviously host. The seating is still up in the air. They still have three yes. games left. Next week, they play Seacock and Aponaquit, and that's going to end the regular season. But we know that we'll play at least one more after that. A lot of bounds are off of. <coughs> Mode is going to get it in. She does so. Court. Benton Court to Monas. And it's going to be stolen there by Barmashi for the canal men to the hell. Oh, she goes and she's fouled. That's on Tori. First on Benton Court. You know, Case really hasn't shown a lot of discipline in this first half. Already committing six fouls, and we're nine minutes into the game. They get, they get to slow down, and they, well, they want to be aggressive, but then there's being too aggressive. They can't be too aggressive, or else they're going to be in trouble. Second free throw is good. Uh, I heard Coach Craig Davidson of the. Okay. Born team mentioned this to his other coaches just a moment ago, but they are in the bonus for the rest of the half now. I'm not sure what that pass was. Fitzgerald got kind of swarmed there from the Born defense, which was just excellent job from the Canalman. 15-14 is the score in favor of Born. They have taken the lead with that free throw. It was tied. Four three-pointer is up, no good. A rebound pulled down by Sorois. Over to Bentoncourt. Court to Monis, she lost it, got it back along the baseline, puts it up. I think that might have been partially tipped. And on the ground by Fitzgerald, down to Soroy's underneath, and that's blocked. Just straight up blocked by Brooke McCallum for Bourne. And that's a high pass, and it's caught by Bob Mitchell there in front of the, uh, the other entrance to the gym. Brooke Orton and Morgan Fitzgerald. Had this trouble rolling. Tori Bentoncourt came out. It's worth pointing out that number 13, Riley McDonald's in as well for Case. She's going to shoot it quickly and no good. Tipped around and a foul the back. On the count. Good job by Wharton taking the contact, drawing the automatic foul. Still be. This you're not going to see a lot of slowing, slowing it down for Bourne. They don't slow it down. 
a lot. Run and gun, that's their that's their style of offense. Run and gun and the man-to-man -man defense. Yes. Run and gun. They need a they need a basket here. It really doesn't matter what. They need points. Basket. That was a on the push. Jessica Laflamme's second foul, so they got to watch her. Defense. Control. Sir Royce for the Cardinals. The corner. Or and looking for Fitzgerald, but tipped away and stolen by Bourne. That was a great hustle by Fernandez. Surprising he has scored so far in this game. Yeah, done their homework. She has a rebound. That's about it. I think actually, I actually think it was McCarthy. That's her third. Yeah. And they're not gonna. That was to Amber, he just sailed left. No, nope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what Case is. I mean, Case is obviously doing a lot of things wrong. Interesting to see what Coach Silva draws up in the huddle. Maybe saying, again, as I mentioned earlier, step out on those three pointers. They've done none of that so far. And one really, again, push the pace, control the pace of this game, and execute really on both sides of the floor, which what they've really been doing, and being disciplined, showing discipline, not fouling. As we didn't follow as much in the first quarter as they have now, um, but even case they're already both teams are already in the bonus. Yeah. That was. Tyler, I'm going to point out something. Case versus Westport. No. Yeah, we're going to back. That was an amazing ending. Yes. It it, it ain't over till it's over. I mean, I'm not saying it's over right now. Oh, but, oh no. Well, at least you take solace in the fact that going to be going to the tournament. Sure. Just get to a tournament. Absolutely. Warren's one of those. They're the down on the cape. The edge of the cape, so they yeah. play a lot of cape teams as well. So they're, they're still on the South Coast Conference, but not really the most traditional team. As Saroy misses that three, and it's controlled by Monin. But he passes it right to Barbara. Mosh. Unfortunately, on the other team. He's going to run it in for a run. That's going to give Nora 11 points in this game. A sophomore from the Nelman having a fantastic game. It was up to a nine point lead. And a foul there on Bourne. And Van McCarthy. That's her second. Van McCarthy, her second, the team's seventh. Reporting at the line, the Cardinals shooting one and one. So both teams are in the bonus now, so. One and one here for Cardinals. If Bourne makes his free throw, she gets a second free throw. And she got it, so another free throw coming up for Brooke. All she gotta do is relax. That's a big key to three throw, free throws. Relax, you in the basket. 
And that there one's go. good as well. So, Hornet makes both the free throws there. That finally stops the drought that Case had been yes. in. In about four, four and a half minutes that they had scored. That was even going back to the first quarter. Warren looking to just keep this going. They're up by seven points currently. Three-pointer is up, yeah, off the backboard and no good. Rebound controlled by Sorois. Warren coach going out 23 right now to his team. Bentoncourt to Moniz, tipped around and out of bounds. That's gonna be off of Bourne. Silva yelling out, slide it. Let's see what that means. Warren, that pass was over everybody there. That's gonna be an easy layup there, I think. No, off oh. the back, and then right there for the follow-up at least is Barmashi to Bourne. Going to extend their lead. 25-16. Oh, almost stolen there by Fernandes. Orton gets into a route, a short jumper off the, around the rim, no good. Rebound pulled down by Bourne. All the momentum right now, controlling this quarter. Barmashi again. She's on fire. Bourne is just blowing this open right now. They're up to 11 point lead. I did not see this coming after how close oh, that first quarter yeah. was. Horton for three, no good. That would have got some momentum back. Sir Royce with the really ugly shot, but it's going to be controlled like anyway. I can't tell if she was trying to shoot that or if she was she fouled. She was trying to shoot. It looked like a foul on the arm. But they didn't call nothing. It doesn't matter. Uda was there for the foul up 27 yeah. 18. Bourne scored 13 points this quarter compared to only four for Case. And a foul on Bourne. Looks like, you Looks know, like an illegal screen. Legal screen. And it was on Gobiel. That is not a, most fouls warrant the, the one and one. That was not one of them. Yeah, because that's an illegal screen. So, offensive fouls, I believe, don't trigger the. Offensive fouls do not trigger the. Right, neither does the illegal screen. Orton, she's gonna shoot that, no good. That's her money shot there yeah. from the corner. She loves that shot. And the pass again by Mashi. How many times has she gotten that, that open look under the rim? Just right there. Off the backboard, anyway, it's 29 to 18. Bentoncourt, and good defense there from Bourne, and ball on the ground, and a travel there. Called on Bourne, she kind of slid with it. Coach was getting some clarity from the yes. official there, and he was satisfied with the answer. And oh, there, there we go, go Amber. <laughs> that was going to be uh, 40 Emily Sullivan. First, the team's night. So they have one free throw coming here. And she got it. That's. Seven points for Aruda in this game. 29-21, Case with a little bit of life now. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Back to the man-to-man uh, -man full court press, it looks like. Sullivan with the ball, she gives it over to Barmashi. Yeah. She's gonna shoot, oh, oh off the back of the rim. She's made that shot a few times yeah. this game. That's her money shot, just like Brooke from the corner. Fernandes, who's still scoreless in this game, she's gonna shoot it now. And that's a little off, goes right to Orton. Minute and a half remaining here in the first half. Mona is going to put up a floater and foul. Foul's wow. going to be on Borgolt. Foul number one on Borgolt. Our second team limit. Jamie Mona at the line shooting two. The so now, no matter what, Case will get two free throws. Correct. Mona is free throw. Her, her motion reminds me of like a, a pinball spring. Just like pull it and. Always an arcing shot, too. It's weird, but it works. And she got them both. Four points for Jamie. Case cuts it back to six points. Now they get the momentum. 5-0 five, uh, five run here in the last minute or so. Fernandes. 
That's Barmashi. He's very good with that outside shot, as we've seen. Tipped out of bounds off of Case. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Nandis to Barmashi. She, she gets it back. She's got to shoot it though. Barmashi does get the shot off, and oh good, that did reset the shot clock. But Case pulls out the rebound anyway. This is going to be Riley Fitzgerald quickly double team. So Bourne knows what they're doing. Fitzgerald's going to shoot it wow. anyway, and it's just good. So she gets it to three. It's back to three point lead for Bourne. Case has really come to life here. Oh, three pointer there for Barmashi off the backboard. She's got 20 points so far in this game. Yeah, 20. Head to a six point lead. Tori Bettencourt, I don't know how she got that to go in. There you go, Tori. She's got four. Four for Tori. 32 28. Morgan can hold for the final shot if they want. One egg, one egg. Controlled, saved. Fernandes gets it back with 12 seconds. With the pass, Barmashi again. Oh, good. And out of bounds off of Case. So Bourne has another shot at this 6.7 seconds. Six seconds, girls. Fernandes thought about it. Barmashi open for three. Does not get the roll. Rebound pulled down by Aruda. And that'll do it here for the first half. Score is 32 to 28. So a quick point breakdown, then we'll take a break. Tori Bentoncourt has four points, Ann Baruta has six, Jamie Monis has four, Brooke Orton has two, and Riley Fitzgerald has 11. For the Canal men, Nora Barmashi leads all scorers with 20. Jessica LaFlam has three, and Haley McCarthy has six. So we are going to take a quick break from the Paul Monahan Gymnasium, and we'll be back to bring you second half action. Welcome back to the start of the second half of tonight's basketball game between the Joseph Ace High School Cardinals and the visiting Bourne Canalman. This is Tyler Clark trying to talk a little quieter this time. Yeah. Chris Lonzi Cable Access along with Brady Kuda. Brady, the score is 32 to 28, but Case really closed it in at the end of the second half because Bourne had pulled well away as Brooke McCallum's gonna put in two points. Anyway, I know you have some comments from the first half, so you can go ahead yeah. and say those whenever you want. Absolutely. Let me just mark that there for McCallum. Um, yeah, Case, what they're really gonna do. Ooh. That's a foul on Barmanchi, her first. Um, what Case really has to do better is just about Really everything, quite frankly, except um, their inside game has actually been really well, drawing fouls, right? And Bourne, Bourne just has to play their game, do their job. That run and gun offense that they love, the man to man D. Um, and I, I certainly hope we'll be in for a more tightly contested uh, second half. And I do want to talk about Amber Aruda briefly. Before we went on the air, um, we had a, the, uh, it is, in case you don't know, senior night for the girls Correct. here um, at Case High School. Senior night for the boys is next Friday against the Poniquit. We will unfortunately not be covering that game, uh, but I will say it now. Congratulations to Alex Lovec, Aiden Emerson, and Steven Senecal for great careers here at Case High School. I know um, Alex Lovec certainly will be missed. He was kind of a uh, uh, walking highlight reel whenever he was on the court. And First I, time enjoyed, I enjoyed watching him. So whatever he decides to do, whatever Aiden and Steven decide to do, I wish them well. Now Amber, on the other hand, um, has not committed to a school yet. Her final three are Rhode Island, Bridgewater State, and New Hampshire. Um, looks to play volleyball in college. As I've mentioned before, volleyball is her number one sport. It looks to study uh, human development and social work in college. So we, we certainly wish Amber well on that, only senior Absolutely. on the, yes. the old case team. I uh, spoke to her even a little more uh, pre-game in the locker room. She told me that she felt no pressure that this was her last game. As that rolls in from the cow. Um, told me that there's no pressure and then you know, it's just another game. 
That's how you, it's obviously not another game, but you need to play it like it is another game. Right, it's the last, I mean, the K still has two games next week. Right. They're both away. So it's not like it's the last game, and they are going to qualify for the tournament. Right. But the point is, Senior Night, the last and she home even, regular season yeah. game. And she even told me that she was more happy to make the tournament more than anything. First and, time in many years, like I said, they made the tournament. Yeah. Let's go, defense. Let's go. Oh, shot, no good. So Bourne with pretty good defense here. Case hasn't scored yet in this half, and that pass was a little too hard. McCallum, uh, Emma, Brooke McCallum and Kaya Fernandez are the two seniors on uh, the Bourne Canal team. So I also, or actually we, actually all of us, just wanted to give them access. Wish them the best in the future. And they, uh, no. they, they were part of the, the yes. opening ceremony as well. They received flowers yes. and some no. recognition for being the, the two seniors on the Bourne team. So you're looking at a Bourne team with only two seniors. So they have plenty of youth to come as well. And a travel on Fitzgerald. Both of the officials blew their whistles at the same time for that. I must give credit where credit is. This has been a very well officiated game Absolutely. so far. Very, yeah. very well. Yeah. No, neither coach has said. Um, I'm not sure the official's name, but. Uh, the man on the, uh, our right side um, with the hair, uh, the older gentleman in the back, he's always, always exceptional. Both of these officials did the uh, the JV game earlier as well that we could see, yeah, and they foul on McCallum. Now, Amber also told me that um, she has some personal thank yous that she likes to give, so I'll start out with um, her family, especially her parents and her brother, um, always being there for her, always supporting her. Um, to Case High School, especially Coach Dave Silva and the assistants Julie Reloach and Ellie Roberts. Um, she said that also to Swansea, Massachusetts, they really made her who she is today and the woman she has become. And Kaya Fernandez with her first two points of the game. And the foul on Tori Bentoncourt for his second. You may as well just do the rest of the game yourself at this yeah. point. Who needs me at this point? <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. No, no, wait till after the free throw. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> do your job. Randy, I'd love to do my job, but you're doing all the talking for me. I'm sorry. C continue. No, keep going. You have something you want to say. I have a lot to get out. Keep going. Keep going. That's actually, that's, that's everything. That was it. Are you sure that was it? That's everything. That's everything. Amber had a lot to say. Yeah, you went up uh, looking for her. I mean, you, you, you were look, talking to her when I even arrived here yeah. and out of bounds off of Born there. I mean, it's only a matter of time, I'm sure, until you start doing play-by-play -play anyway. You're only in eighth grade, so you got four more. Awesome. You're going to case, so I mean, you still get some more years of doing this. And well, blocked block by, by Jamie, Jamie Moniz, out of bounds, off of case. Uh, yeah, case born ball. So Bourne will retain possession. Timeout called by coach Dave Silva. Case being shut out in this, this half. It's seven nothing right now in favor of Bourne. I don't know, you talk so much there and not much to comment on because you kind of took care of all of it for me. I'm sorry. I don't need to apologize, I mean, it's fine. So seven nothing for Bourne here in this half. Score is 39 to 28. Bourne looking to advance to 10 and five on the year. Case would drop to 10 and eight. So as we're saying, it's, it's senior night for Amber Ruta, but it is not the last game of the year. They still do have two games there, both away next week. Seekonk and Aponiquit, the boys, very bizarre scheduling, have three games, home games, all next week. Yeah, and it's a tough schedule. Seekonk, Bishop they, Conley, and They host uh, the Seekonk Warriors on Tuesday. On Thursday, they host the Bishop Conley Cougars, which is weird, this late in the season, the out-of-conference game, Bishop Conley playing in the Mayflower Athletic Conference. And then on Friday, they're here to host the Aponiquit Lakers. So, talk to Coach Wenzel, he said, they're gonna win two out of the next three. They already lost to Wareham. So, well, we'll, we'll see. If they can beat Seekonk and Aponiquit, Conley and Aponiquit, we'll see. As long as they win two out of the next three, they're in the tournament. Some combination of that, but let's go back to the girls right now. Is Bourne gonna try to get in and they do show? Do so, excuse me. Fernandes underneath, that's Borgholt. And a lot of quick passing going on. Fernandes gonna shoot that in and out, no good. 
Ball on the ground is a scrum and a jump ball. Not a lot of jump balls yeah. so far in this game. In Benton Court, Case has retained that jump ball, obviously. So four minutes into this half, Case still hasn't scored. Being outscored seven to nothing by Bourne. Still not out of it, obviously. Ruta with the shot, does not get the roll, and it's gonna be controlled by Saroy. She's gonna put it up, and that breaks the rut. Abby Saroy is for their first points of the game. Abby's only a sophomore, will be saying her name for a couple more years here. Yeah, she is a sophomore, so. 39 to 30. I look forward to her efforts off the bench next season as the sixth, the sixth woman. And oh, that counts. Wow. Borgalt for three. That was a three. It was. They gave her. There's the three. It was. Our first points of the game. That was a, not your most conventional three. It was off off the top mm -hmm. of the rim back. And a jump ball. Session error goes to Bourne. They've had some games this year where there hasn't been a single jump ball. And there's been this game where there's been... Seven teams. <laughs> <laughs> Several jump balls. I don't know if it's 17, but it's, it's been quite a, a few. It's been a lot. Born with a 12 point lead. I knew this would be a tough uh, tough matchup here for Case. And Born just completely controlling this half. Case has only scored two points. Borgall ends up on the ground with that. This is back to Fernandes now at the top of the key, well guarded by Bentoncourt. Laflam from the foul line, no good. Rebound goes to Aruda, giving it up to Monas. Mona is looking underneath for Sir Fitzgerald and a foul on the floor. Coach Davidson using more subs. That was on Borgal, her third, the team's third as well. Borgal back in. Lauren going to try to get this in. And she does so to Bettencourt. Shot is no good. Rebound controlled the board. I must give credit where credit is due. I have to commend the sportsmanship of board coach Craig Davidson. He's been yeah, outstanding yeah, with the players, yeah. with the officials. I De mean, definitely been one of the better coaches here with the officials. You see, some coaches just ride the officials all game yep. long, and he is absolutely not one of yeah. those. Coach Dave Silva's pretty good with the officials, too. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. say much. Three pointer is up, around and no good. Rebound controlled by Case, two minutes and 10 seconds. Case still with only two points here in this half. Warren on the other hand is 10. Orton for three, no good. That, that was pretty far out. Yeah. Fernandes with the rebound, long pass up. Controlled by Haley McCarthy, a freshman. Oh, it's like a tip drill going on. That went right through the legs of McCallum and it's still good. How did Bourne end up with it after all that? That no was. Idea. That was right in front of us, and Abby Saroy stepped down, so obviously she didn't want to touch the ball, so. Five seconds five on seconds, the shot clock. Yeah. And he's going to shoot it, and she's just going to put it up, and no good. She's only got three points. That was off of a, a layup and a, a foul to go along with it, so Case has at least held her in check this game. And Fitzgerald. Yeah. Can't keep her quiet forever. She's got 13. 13 points. That could have been a travel there, I think, personally, but nothing called doesn't really matter. It's a 10 point lead still for Bourne. And tipped away and out of bounds off of. I love it. This has been the case, the case since I went to case. Whenever it goes out of bounds off of Bourne, they always say blue, even though it's purple. Purple, but blue is much easier to say than yes. purple. 10 seconds on the shot clock here for Fernandes. Three-pointer is up, and it's no good. Case has really uh, more or less controlled that three-point shot, and it's controlled in the corner by their Saroys. Benton Court to the corner now, and tipped out of bounds. Not tipped out of bounds. Um, that looked like that was just, I thought it was tipped at first, but the official said it was clean shot out of bounds. Yep. 45 seconds to go here in the third quarter. 10-point lead still for Bourne, Case only with four points here in this third quarter. Very quiet. McCallum gonna get the ball at the top of the key. 
to Hannah Wenzel, number 10. Gobiel. And a foul there, gonna be called on Fitzgerald. Foul number 33, Randy Fitzgerald, our first team second. Our first the team second. Or substitute. Every time I look up, there's a substitute coming in for Bourne. Just and constant. you're not exaggerating either. It's just, every break, there's almost always a substitute. Yeah. They're just incredibly deep bench. Almost every, only a couple names on the roster that haven't even played yet. Yeah. And the roster is, is, is deep on top yeah. of that. The shot is no good. The it's rebound goes Megan to Ro Saroy. Megan Roach, Kendall Fortune, and Brooke Moonday, who have not played. Fitzgerald heaves it, it's no good. The rebound goes to Bourne. And that'll do it here for the first quarter. Third quarter, rather, it's 42 to 32. So Brady, if you want to take a second, you can kind of comment on what you've been observing so far in this quarter. Yeah, it's really been the same all, all quarter, uh, not even all quarter, all game, really. Um, plain and simple, Bourne's controlled this game. And there's really not much to say. Case. They've really looked lazy, and that's really one word to sum this game has been lazy. They're losing a lot of the 50-50 balls, not fighting for the rebounds as they usually do, and what, what, they're, they're getting outplayed. They're getting out hustled, and they're getting outplayed. Well, my man, I take a sip of my drink. Yeah. This is rather tiring. 42-32 the score. Case only with four points there in that entire quarter. So Bourne looks like they're kind of in control, which would Unfortunately, break a pretty good streak we've had going this year is, yeah. is the... Uh, I mean, again, game's not over. No. We've seen crazy comebacks, and any, anything can happen. The Westport game comes to mind, but broadcast eight games so far this year at Swansea Cable Access. Many of those live, and uh, Case had come out on top of all... Excuse me, seven games so far this year. Case had come out on top of all those so far, so... Just a matter of time. We still have one more next week. Like I said, we're scheduled to do boys versus Bishop Connolly right now. And the time for the postseason, but we'd have to see. Uh, the girls are in. We don't know what seed they're going to be. Still some time to determine that. Seven, seven and seven, they're sitting pretty well to possibly in a posting, but. Maybe. I, I, ho I certainly hope they host, but you never know. See how it goes. Anyway, Keith's trailing by 10 here. Mona's gets it into Aruda. Now looking out of bounds off of Bourne, so. Case going to retain possession. Orton going to try to get it in. Yeah, looking for Aruda tipped away, but it's controlled by it to the corner. Orton can inside to Monas with that hook shot. It is no good. And that shot is no good. With the rebound and a foul there on Fernandes. One foul, number 14, Kaya Fernandes. That's her first. Team's fourth. Team's fourth. Free throw is no good. It's unbelievably quiet during that. Yeah. Rona's with five points now. That cuts the lead to nine. It is 42 to 33. Coach Greg Davidson yelling out a, a play for the board offense. Fernandez is going to drive foul, so she'll get a couple free throws. Fernandez is definitely a great player. She'll look at three points this game, but you can just see her poise out there. Fernandez going to shoot two. Free throw is good. From Fernandes, that brings the board lead back up to 10. Number 11, just for Laflamme, and Wenzel back in for Bourne. Second fruit there was good. So Brady, as, as far as we know, Hannah Wenzel for Bourne and Coach Steve Wenzel are completely unrelated to case coach Dan Wenzel, as far yeah. as we know. I, I'd actually, I'd be shocked if they were related, but I believe, don't quote me on this, I believe they are father and daughter. Not 100% not sure, but it's a 
crazy coincidence if they were not related. Yeah, I know. That would be something. And then he's just eight seconds. She gets good. It's kind of hard. Warren really just really taking their time here up by 11 points. I mean, they. Why not? Want, I mean, Fernandez is just incredible. Ball handler, but that's stolen by Mona's on the ground, and it's picked up, controlled by Soroy. He's going to pick up that dribble. Soroy spin move, lost the handle. It's picked up now by Bourne. Full of flam up to Fernandez. Man, she is fast. Yeah. And puts it up. I must say, before the game started, you would kind of wander over. I was standing on the sideline talking to Coach Dave Silva because the Bourne team took a long time to come out of that. Like, I mean, they, there were six minutes left in the warm-up time, and they just finally came sprinting out in a full sprint. And Coach Dave Silva, I don't remember the exact quote, was something along the lines of that's how fast they fast break. Yeah, it was they came out here, sprinted down the sideline here, around the baseline, did something in half court, and... We were standing right next to Coach Silva, and he said, that's how fast that fast break is. And I say sprint, I mean like track meet sprint. Full sprint. The foul was on Borgault, which is her fourth, so she's out. Number four, Brooklyn Day is in. That free throw that I'm talking was good, by the way, from Riley Fitzgerald. And she got them both. Riley is a fantastic free throw shooter. As they've been saying throughout the year, she has 15 points, so she's leading case scores. Nora Barbashi had 20 points in the first half. She was actually held scoreless in the third quarter. Yeah. But there she is right there, a little yeah. sick dribble there. Talk about the halftime adjustments. That's probably been the biggest one. For Case, and that's stolen by Sorois. Sorois has three steals now in this game. She's played excellent defense. She certainly has, and she's got uh, two points to go and look at. Case down by 11. But Cheryl thought about the three. Monis has that pass is tipped out of bounds. Control, ooh, almost controlled by a fan in the stands. Good job by that husband saving his wife. <laughs> nice job. She'll get, he'll get an extra Valentine's Day gift. It was a uh, week from today, Friday, February yeah, 7th. Yeah, week from right today. Now. You got a birthday coming up soon, though, don't you? My birthday is on Monday. Monday, that 10th? 10th. 10th, so happy early birthday. Thank you, Tyler. Yeah. What's your birthday? June 26th. June 26th. So uh, the joke for me, my joke has always been, I used to tell people that I never had to, my, my mom never uh, made me go to school on my birthday. <laughs> yeah. Although I remember one year I had to go to driving school on my birthday. Oh. And, yeah. it, was, it was early enough, it was fine. Nope, June 26th, six months and one day from Christmas, so it was always the, the, my best birthday when I was uh, growing up. My, my parents have birthdays. My mother's birthday is December 18th, and my father's January 5th, so that's yeah, right, right around Christmas, Christmas, and I got mine in the summer, so I'm certainly not complaining. Maybe uh, that was tipped by Case, so that's not a backcourt violation. I was going to say, maybe Case can uh, stage a little comeback here for an early Let's birthday see. gift for you, but it is not looking too good right now. And they're down by 13, yeah. as Jeff LaFlam puts that in to get for five points. Hey, double team got Tori. Tori, but the pass to Moniz is up. Very odd motion of her, but it's, it's rather it effective. She's a, he's a good shooter. Yeah. That high arcing shot, like a spring. 11 point lead still for Bourne. A lot of quick pass, a three pointer. That would have been an absolute dagger had that gone in, but it was not. This team's going to be a threat in the tournament. Oh, if yeah, they absolutely. I would imagine they'll qualify. That's a floater. Yeah. That's Barmashi. You can't keep her in check for too long. That's 22 points for her. By the way, that missing three pointer from early in the game when we were. Told by one of the Bourne coaches to not do our job. <laughs> I believe it was Haley McCarthy, what you said, so that was right. The shot by Sirois is no good, and it's controlled. Not controlled, but Aruda's foot's on the line. Amber has uh, seven yeah. points. Timeout now. called by Coach Dave Silva. Four minutes and 10 seconds remaining here in the game. It's 50 to 37. So certainly not the senior night that. Amber Ruta had envisioned here. I mean, I'm yeah. not saying it's a blowout, but it's... Again, and Amber, Amber said it was, the, the attitude I got from her was, that great, that's my night, but we, we got bigger things to look forward to, just like Bill Belichick, right? And the, if 
Patriots press conference. It's great. We won this game. On to the next game. That's how Amber. That's how Amber was with me, and that's that's what I like in a player, a coach. Looking, next, what's Tom Brady? What's my favorite ring? The next one. Right. Exactly. What's, what's the best? What's what's going to be your favorite game? The next one. Well, at least Amber has something that. The uh, Case Senior hadn't done in a long yeah. time, but just playing the postseason, yeah. regardless of seed, as I said. Um, 50 to 37, four minutes and 10 seconds to go here in the game. We have the Burr written on one of the, uh, the, the burr. padding. The Burr. That's what they call her. And a nice picture of Amber there with the holding a basketball Poster, yeah. right when you came in near one of the ticket tables. So Amber That's been the a, first thing I saw when I came in. I was like, oh my goodness. So you come really in the front, I come in the back every yeah. time. So. Certainly a force of this, this case offense for a few years. I remember the first uh, game that we broadcast a couple years ago when it was Diamond. She actually did be taken out in an ambulance. Amber? Something, yeah, something happened. She got hit in the oh nose and it was something with blood flow or. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was really quite a thing. That was the first game uh, that Josh and Aubin and I, uh, he did the games with me last year, and had done. That was, yeah, it was. Scary. That was quite scary, but she's certainly come a long way since then and a foul there on Bourne. That was my first memory. All three, three years, the last three years that we've been broadcasting games. The first game we did was against Diamond every time. Yeah. Boys, your first game this year was Diamond. My first game was Diamond. First game ever was Diamond. It was the girls' game against Diamond, so that shot is no good for Mona's. That's Fernandes up. Look, pass and blocked by Aruda. by Amber. That gets a clap. Yeah. 351. That was all ball. Yes, it was. McCarthy going to try to get it in for Bourne. She does so to the corner to Barmashi to Fernandes. And She's got seven points. Could easily have more. The shot clock did not reset. I'd be very surprised once Amber leaves. If you don't know, Case has an athletic hall of fame. I'd be very surprised if Amber's name was not made. Right, and she certainly should be in there anyway. She should be. And if not just for this, for volleyball. What does she do in the spring? Is it track? Track. Track, okay. Track star. Yep. Track, of course. And as we mentioned in the, the ceremony before, she's the vice president of the National Honor yeah. Society on top of that. So quite a... Uh, Time for Ruta and a sub coming in is Riley Fitzgerald. Comes in, Jamie Moniz is out. Talking about youth, I mean, Case, Amber's the only senior that didn't lose Riley to junior, but everyone else is probably presumably returning and a foul. Yeah, they've got a bright future to look forward to. Obviously, Amber is a huge loss. And they've got real, they've got two, or. Actually, three really great options. Um, I would say Riley McDonald role. would be the most likely. What is it? I think Riley McDonald would be the most Riley likely. Riley McDonald, she's a center. She's a freshman. And We're she's actually a both. lot like Amber. There's Addie Singleton, who we haven't seen a lot of this year. No, not really. She's a junior. But uh, she's, she's, a, she's a junior. A little shorter than Amber, but... She moves really well on the boards, can shoot the basketball, and then there's the JV option. Eighth grader, her name is Libby Gazelle, and she is tall. She's about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, shoot the ball really well, is an animal on the boards, and I, I'd be very surprised if she didn't make varsity next year, but, you know, we'll You're see. You're a classmate too, right? I have, I have a class with her, yeah. And oh. I'd be, this, this, I'll put it this way, there's really, I'll make it short and I'll make it sweet. Case basketball, especially women's basketball, has a bright future. All right, that's, saw that coming up. Orton with that shot. It's cut down to 11 point lead, 50 to 39. Fernandes, three pointer is up, no good. So Board looking for that put away shot, and they just, in a timeout called by coach Craig Davidson for Bourne. That was probably smart, because Bourne was trying to get a, yes, agreed. a play together. Agreed. Let's take a minute to take care of a couple things here. The head coach for Case is Dave Silva. Assistant coaches are Julie LaRoche and Ellie Roberts. Team captains are Amber Ruda. 
obviously, <laughs> and Riley Fitzgerald. For the Canalmen, the head coach is Craig Davidson. Assistant coaches are Samantha Fasoli, Mike Fortune, and Steve Wenzel, who as far as we know, unrelated to the case coach Dan Wenzel. Team captains are Kai Fernandez and Brooke McCallum. Whenever Case plays Bourne, it's always a bit of a haul for either team because Bourne's right there on the edge of the cape yeah, with the Bourne bridges. Yeah, Bourne is over. about 45 minutes from 40, there. Almost an hour. Almost an hour. Um, so yeah, they've, they've definitely got a hike. Bourne is, uh, Bourne is one of those teams, Bourne, Seekonk, and Case that are all on the south coast. What makes them unique is they're all schools that pull from a single town. you got Dighton Rehoboth, which is Dighton Rehoboth, two towns. Old Rochester pulls from three towns. Bedford Voke is a vocational school, so it pulls from a number of towns. Fairhaven, quits a couple towns. Fairhaven's only one town, yeah. um, but they still Wareham are. Is Wareham's one. one town, but they're also a very large school. Yeah, Wareham school. is at least 1,200, 1,300 kids in that school. They're always just an amazing powerhouse yeah, in basketball. Always. The one year, the one year for boys Wareham basketball that they had an off year, Case got them in the tournament wow. two years ago. They were a 10 seed, Case was a 7 seed, and that was the, the Drew Plant farewell game. Yes. Where Blairham, some of the whole team double teaming them. But He's, so. at, he's at UMass Dartmouth now. He was at Worcester Poly, and then he transferred to UMass Dartmouth. Oh, really? That's good to know. As far as I know, he's doing well. I have no people who have connections with him, and I always ask about him. He's, so far, he's, he's doing well. Back to this game. Fernandez is fouled, and she'll get two free throws out of it. Val's going to be on Aruda. Her third. And the team's fourth. And the free throw is no good from Fernandes. So barring a... I'll say it after this. But barring a complete collapse here, it looks like Bourne's going to be on their way to a win. And be sending Swansea Cable access yes. to our first loss yeah. on the year. Yeah, so again, barring a complete collapse, Case will move on to a 10 and 8 record. Correct. Which, I don't know, I, I obviously, this is kind of like a no kidding Brady moment. Um, love to see them host a tournament game, but it's really amazing that they're getting back to the tournament. And then Bourne, I'd be shocked if they didn't host. Yeah, Simply put, they'll, they'll move on to 10 and 5. Um, oh, look at that dribbling yeah, from Fernandez. Yeah, that Fernandes. was crazy. And then ends up throwing hey, it no. away, but... Fantastic dribbling, though. Yes, agreed. Diet. Fernandez is one of the better ball handlers I've seen this year. She has. Fernandez, uh, Tori Bentoncourt. Bentoncourt's only a sophomore, too, so she's got a The girl in Diamond. The freshman, I can't remember her name from Westport. Uh, Zuber. She was amazing. No, not Zuber. Rounds. Rounds, Avery Rounds. Avery yes. Rounds. Yeah, she was amazing. <laughs> Zuber was on the Westport team last year. That's what made me think of that. Um, Leah Sylvain from Westport. She's amazing. And the, and, and the crazy thing is. You got well, a good memory from other, some no, of these I'm, players. It's from, weird because I'm like digging deep in my memory. What's, what? cr what's crazy is that Rounds is a freshman, Sylvain's a freshman, Betancourt's a sophomore, and Fernandez is the only senior. So that really shows that Southeastern Massachusetts how well, much talent there is in basketball. Just doing a quick, this is your, this is the fifth girls game that we've done this year. Uh, you remember Diamond was the first yeah. one. We did Westport, that was the crazy ending. Very even is the game we did with Alexis, so you weren't here for that. And then we did Somerset Berkeley. No one from that game really stands out to me. Except the, the twins, uh, not the twins, the sisters. The sisters. So they were both like the forward and the four and the five. And they and, could play basketball. And those were the, the girls' games that we've done so far this year. I'm trying to think. Boys, we covered Middleborough, Middleborough Diamond. Diamond, and Fairhaven with that incredible upset. That was, <coughs> that was something else. And then. Fortunately, at that point, the Swansea Cable Access had covered every game had been a win. So unless we're a minute and two seconds away from an epic collapse here from Bourne, it looks like we're going to get our cover our first loss here on the year, which is unfortunate, but it happens. Case is not giving up, though. They're going to go with a full court press, try and force Bourne never, into something they really... They never say die attitude of Case that I like. Fernandes lost it. 
It's a good start, a foot's on the line. 59.9 seconds. So, 59.9 seconds, it's... Quick three here would be great. They get Brooke or Riley open anywhere on the floor for three, that's huge. Oh. Gets it into Tori. They just gonna get a shot off quickly to get to Orton. She's the one to shoot it. Aruda to Bentoncourt again. No good. Rebound goes to Bourne. Just try to not turn it over. Get it to Fernandez, your best ball handler. Guarded by Monas. I'm surprised that Case is not intentionally fouling here. I suspect they would soon, but it's really not a big deal if they do. I mean, unfortunately, they're not gonna. Yeah, there we go. And a There's screen, a oh, foul called on. McCallum. Oh. That was like a moving pick to me, so you can't really yeah. do that. Quick like three. The born coach agreed with the call, so that was. And the turnover from Case. 25 seconds. Now, now I suspect, suspect they will start following the suit. But I mean, it's only 25. I, I'm, I'm not so sure about that in the game. No, I, think that, that, yeah. I think they just admit defeat here and get on with it. I don't think more than a foul there, but I might stand corrected. I'm sorry. Well, I don't think that was intentional. I think she was trying to steal it. Her second, the team's fifth, so still not the bonus. Coach. Uh, shoot the Craig clock, Davidson yeah. telling me, do not shoot. Shoot the clock. No shot, shoot the clock. Pass the ball around. Do not turn it over, get it to Fernandes, five. your best ball handler. Yep. You're gonna be guarded by Monas. And it's gonna be stolen by Riley Fitzgerald. There goes Riley to the hole. That's her oh, Nova Quinn attitude. And that's gonna do it. Final score, 51 to 43 in favor of Bourne. So, Case going to fold a 10 and 8 on the year, and the Bourne Canal will advance a 10 and 5. Quick point break, Dan. We'll uh, end the broadcast. Tori Bentcourt with four points. For Case, Amber Ruda with six. Abby Sorois with two. Jamie Moon is with seven. Brooke Horton with four. And Riley Fitzgerald leading Case scores with 19. For Bourne, Emma Borgalt had three. Norma Barmashi led all scores with 22 points. Jessica Lithlam had five. Haley McCarthy had nine. Kai Fernandes had eight. And Brooke McCallum had four. So this is Tyler Clark, Swansea Cable Access Channel 9. Please to bring you this game live on our Swansea Cable Access Facebook page, along with Brady Kudo. Saying goodnight, and we'll see you next time.